Well, uh, 2023, the year of more, and we want to continue to do more and uh, live better and do everything else. So last week, even though I started something, I didn't have uh, the all the time to do it uh, with uh, communion, everything that got involved. But I want to just continue to look at some things I believe is very important. I read some verses, which we'll read again. So matter of fact, if you want to, or if you don't want to, it don't matter. Go ahead and turn to Mark chapter four as I get ready to do this. Amen. Mark chapter four. So we talked about uh, some things that I heard all the way over into Africa many times, uh, especially in areas that are impoverished. Uh, People talking about, you know, those who have keep getting more and those who don't have is taken away. And, uh, you know, people like to make excuses. People that don't have a whole lot, Uh, They either decide that I'm not going to live this way forever, uh, and I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about just having uh, joy, marriage, everything else that goes with it. Uh, You know, life is more than money. Uh, Money is not what makes the world go around. Jesus is. Uh, But you have to have it to live. So it's not just talking about money, even though the people that that talk to me, that's what they're referring to, and especially in third world countries, uh, you know, uh, you people uh, that have, you always get, and, and those of us that don't have, it seems like we never get, or we're always pushed down, it's always taken away, but they always use their situation as an excuse to never receive. See, if you always use your situation as an excuse, you will always have your situation for an excuse. Somewhere down the line, you're going to have to realize that just because I live this way today, I don't have to stay this way. Amen. Uh, God's taken most people out of nothing and put them in a supernatural position if they want God to touch their life. Some people never want to develop because they like people moaning with them and crying with them and patting them on the back and feeling sorry. Some people are just gifted to want people to feel sorry for them. But feeling sorry for you don't get you out of your mess. Feeling sorry for you doesn't get you healed. People feeling sorry for you doesn't bring you out of your situation. It's love and faith from people that helps you get out of your situation and go further with God. I've said this only because I've had people come to me that has been hurt or injured, that's on Social Security. Uh, Thank God that we have a system in America that helps people like that. I think it can be rightly abused at times, but uh, we have a system. But I know people that have that have been better, that could get healed, that can do it. And they've said to me, I mean, born again people, uh, this particular spirit filled people that, uh, you know, let's just pray and get you healed. No, I don't want to, I don't want to get healed because if I get healed, I got to go back to work. Let me tell you, God can prosper you and strengthen you if you allow God's power to just infuse your life. Amen. I I don't want to just live by the world standards when God's got something better for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's got something better. So don't settle for less. And I, you know, I dealt with this last week or week before and people said, well, you know, I can't do a whole lot. I'm on a fixed income. Well, I started preaching on how to unfix your fix. Uh, you just, we all are. If you, if you work salary, you're fixed. That much per year. If you're hourly or unless you get a chance to work overtime, you're fixed. $15 an hour, $18 an hour, $12 an hour, you're fixed on that. And so, but you can rise above it because whatever you put in the hand of God, God knows how to multiply. Ask the young boy that had five loaves. Um, and, and two fish. And so you just ask what's going on and you'll see the victory in that. But we got to understand the Bible when he talks about those who have, more shall be given, and those who have not shall be taken away. And so uh, I want to read these verses again, and I want to springboard from this and get into some other areas because this all comes by revelation of the heart, not just information. You don't get free by information. You get free by revelation. Amen. And so uh, let me go back and read this parable. Uh, I'm not uh, backward of reading because I think it's good for us to read the Bible. This is church. Amen. This is church. This is where the Bible ought to be read and, uh, and not going on and just, just going on and just doing other things. So this is the parable that, uh, I said God put the, the most premium, Jesus put the most premium in this parable than any parable. So look at verse 13, which is the explanation of it. The first part of it talked about the sower sows the seed. This begins to explain it. We need explanation. 
So uh, don't let yourself get bored because you've heard it before. Faith doesn't come by having heard. It comes by hearing. So just keep hearing, all right? Verse 13, uh, he said to them, Jesus said to them, do, not, uh, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. The sower sows the word, okay? Now, there's all kinds of sowers out there, but they're not all sowers of the word. You got sowers of strife. You got sowers of discourse. Come on. You got sowers of a lot of things, but the, what God's looking for, the sower that sows the word, okay? This explains the parable. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes, how quick? Immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, I want you to know, notice this. He comes immediately to take away the word. That's why I understand when people tell me, Pastor, we come to church and we have a good service. God ministers to us. But by the time we get home, we're fussing and fighting. My wife and I can't get along. The children are doing this. I don't understand. You know, I've come to the conclusion I may not just want to go to church. I mean, if we got to put up this kind of hell, why, why come? I'm thinking, man, why don't you read the Bible? I've held people. Come on. It says when the word of God is sown, like being preached now, when the word of God is sown, Jesus said, written in red, the thief comes immediately to steal the word. So how's he going to steal it? He's going to get to you. But you've got to fortify yourself. You've got to be able to put something around you where he can't take it. Amen. If you're growing a vegetable garden, if you've got a lot of varmints coming to get in it, you'll put some kind of fence, you'll put something around it to protect it. People know that in the natural, we've got to do the same thing in the spirit. You've got to do something to fortify the seed that's in your life. If not, the enemy will continue to steal the word from your heart, and you'll keep walking around saying, I don't know why God never does anything for me. I don't know why God doesn't show up. I don't know why God uh, never answers my prayer. It's not that God's not doing it. God's sending his word. It's just the enemy is out there stealing everything you get. You can stop that mess. You can stop that mess. But you don't stop it by whining. You stop it by taking a stand on the word of God. Come on. By taking a stand on, the, on and for the word of God. All right? And so, um, so he steals it out of their heart immediately. Verse 16, these, these likewise are the ones... The ones sown on stony ground, who, when they hear the word, now I told you last week, underline everywhere you say, hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Praise God. Wasn't that good preaching? They have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time afterwards when tribulations or persecutions for the word arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble, or according to that word, they are offended. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, like all the other ones, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust or desires of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground, who, those who hear the word, same here and again, accept it, bear fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And so that's why if you didn't have it wrote this down, write it down. The subject of this parable is not the ground. The subject of this parable is the word of God. That's a subject. The object of this parable is how that word can produce in your life a hundredfold. That's what the object is. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Now, 30 is better than zero, but it's not as good as 60. And 60 is, not as, is better than 30, but it's still not as good as 100%. So the word has the ability to produce in your life a hundredfold. What does that mean, Pastor? That means everything that Jesus Christ died for, that he made provision for, for your life, that means you can walk in it and have access 100% of the time. But not everybody does it. Why? We allow emotions, we allow other things, we'll make excuses to where we can't receive it. But the word of God, we have the ability to absorb 100% of this word. And that's called revelation. It's not just the information, oh man, I, I'm telling you that, that, that was good, but I just need revelation. I remember years ago, uh, this was right, right, you know, not long, about uh, uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm thinking now it's going to be 2000 because we met Pastor David in the summer of 99. So uh, this is about around 2000. We've been communicating a little bit. And so uh, we were talking and God uh, began to speak to my heart as he was sharing his heart. Pastor David sharing his heart. And I shared with him some words. And, um, and so we were just ministering. And I could tell they were coming from my spirit on the inside. And so a few days later, he called me and said, you know that conversation we had the other day? I said, uh, yeah. He said, uh, what was that? Do you remember what you said to me? I said, no, I don't remember. I said, uh, what were we talking about? Give me the subject. Maybe I can draw it back up. He said, well, we were talking about this, and you, you made a statement. And uh, I was hoping you'd remember it. I said, was it this? He said, no. I said, was it that? No. No. I said, how about this one? No. I said, David, I've, I've rehearsed the whole conversation. I can't remember. He said, I didn't write it down. He said, usually when I'm talking to you, I write things down. But this seems so simple that I didn't write it down. And when he said that, I heard in my spirit, as if somebody was sitting next to me, uh, sitting next to me, I heard in my spirit tell him that when he heard it, I left a carbon copy of it in his spirit. I said, David, uh, the Lord just said he left a carbon copy of that in your spirit if you pray it out. Uh, uh, he'll bring it back up in you. He paused, quiet. He says, well, if he left it a carbon copy in my spirit, he left one in yours because you're the one spoke it. <laughs> Why don't you pray it and let me know what's going on? <laughs> so, but, you know, when we take information, it seems simple. Like, I'll never forget that. But information will go through one ear and process and come out the other side. But revelation is what's absorbed into your born-again spirit. That's when the word becomes life. People say, what, what, what really is faith? I'll tell you what faith is. Faith and revelation, I'll tell you what it is. It's when the word of God hits your born-again spirit and life happens. That's really what happens. The word of God comes in. You protect it. You don't let the enemy steals it. But once that word comes alive inside of you, that's revelation. That's where faith really comes from. And so it's not just hearing it in one ear and out the other. But it's when that word is able to be injected into your spirit. And that word becomes life. It becomes life. And there's an explosion takes place inside of you. And that's when you say, I can walk in this. I can do this. I, I, I can see this through because now it's not just information. Now it's become revelation in you. And so when we get down to verse 21, it looks like uh, there's a new subject. Some Bibles have like a different paragraph title. But he's still talking about the word of God. This whole parable is dealing with the word of God. If we could read this whole chapter, it's all going to be dealing with the word of God. All right, so let's just go to verse 23. If anyone have ears to hear, let him hear. So he's been preaching and he says, hear. Verse 24, he said, take heed what you hear. So how many knows you got to guard what you hear? This is some of the things I said last week. For with the same measure you use it, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. Verse 25, for whoever has, to him will be given. To whoever has, to whoever has, to whoever has, all right, more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So that's talking now about this word and this revelation. When the word of God becomes life to you, and that word is not taken away by the enemy, that word will continue to produce more in your life. But if you keep allowing the enemy to steal what's already been preached to you, what you have received, then he'll continue to steal, kill, and destroy. He'll steal your dreams. He'll, he'll destroy relationships. He'll do everything he can to keep you pressed down. So it's not talking about the rich keeps getting richer and the poor keeps getting poor. It's really, if you want to talk about the rich in the spirit, will keep getting rich in the spirit because they're going to protect what God's put in them. You can't, you can't continue to allow yourself to lose ground in the things of God. You've got to protect it. See, people look at people that have a lot now. Let's say they have a lot, but they may not understand where they come from. They may not understand what they had to do to get there. Uh, I was talking uh, to 
Angel yesterday, and uh, there's this man that, that comes into meetings to help Pastor Barkley. He's, got, he's very successful now. He's got a very successful business, very successful business that he runs. But we were talking uh, the day, actually it was on Thursday because we left on Friday before the meeting end, uh, ended on Friday night. And he said, uh, Pastor, he said, what people see me do now, I did that when I didn't have it. When my wife and I came to this meetings, and I didn't even know I was going to pay my hotel bill. It was on credit cards. I had to pay it later. When I saw that there needed to be money for the budget and honor, I gave when I didn't have it. And I'd leave thinking, I don't know how we're going to pay this off. I don't know how we're going to do this. He said, but the word of God became so real inside of me that if I walk according to this word, there's no way for me to fail. And he said, I started watching myself come out of this situation. He said, so I can't get up and tell everybody now. People see kind of what I have, but they don't understand. We made a decision to live this way before I had evidence that I could even live this way. Other than the word of God. And so that's what people have to understand. Don't ever judge someone that really walks with God in what they have unless you know how they got it. Because not everybody that gets it gets it crookedly. They get it by faith, okay? And God's no respecter of persons, so God can bring anybody out of their situation and take you to places that you've never been. But it's not because man feels sorry for you. It's because God's word cannot fail. It can't fail. It's life to those who find it. And it's help to all their flesh. God's word can't fail. God can not lie. You just got to be able to push through the pressures until you get it. So this is a, I've told this a few times, and I believe it's worth bearing since I started a little earlier today uh, to, to repeat. Uh, when I started Lightnings of God Ministries prior to Angel and I getting married, uh, everything, total everything, for me to buy airline tickets, for me to do everything in my house, rent and whatever, I got $1,000 a month. That's before Uncle Sam said, pay up. That belongs to me. And uh, now that's when you got to pay, you got to pay self-employment because I was no longer employed by an employer. So it wasn't like that, that I could pay half of Social Security. I'd pay all of it. So with the tithe, with Social Security, with, uh, you know, all the stuff at Uncle Sam that's watching out for me, you know, and uh, all of that stuff, you know, he has my best interest at heart. Uh, just not my bank account uh, or the balloons that flies over. No, forget about that. He has our, he has our best interest at heart and everything that goes with it. And uh, so uh, that was carnal, wasn't it? But true, just carnal. But anyway, he has our best interest at heart and everything that's, that's going on, God does. He has, he has our best interest at heart, and, uh, but the world doesn't, but God will. And so, uh, you know, Angel and I married and... Uh, uh, thank God that she had a stable job because we lived mainly primarily in her money. The money that we got from the ministry, we kept putting back in it to help people. I didn't, I didn't travel the way I did before I came here. Uh, I was not preaching more than I was out, uh, more than I was home. I was home more than I was preaching. Because people, you got to build things. you got to build itineraries. And so this was 1999. This was a trip that I met Pastor David on, actually, same, tra same trip. This is when her and I went to Anaheim, California, and attended a conference. And while we're in that conference, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to, there was weird, people were up shouting and dancing. And I mean, uh, the person preaching had everybody, I mean, just on energy. And, uh, and actually, they was preaching about uh, prosperity. That's what it was. And uh, I've soon watched these people get off a little bit. But anyway, people were just energized in the, in the flesh. And the Lord, the word of the Lord came to me and said, sit down, shut up, and listen. I'm going to teach you something about sowing and reaping that will change your life. So I sat down, shut up, but I couldn't hear anything being preached because everybody else was standing up screaming. <laughs> and so... 
what I begin to hear started affecting me. How many knows faith comes by hearing? Sure. Now, at that time, uh, Pastor Rothwell, Edith, that's here, a couple other people that we had a, a board with. And so they had a policy that if I would spend anything over $300, I could get board approval. Not because they wanted to control it. It's just that there was no money. You know, I had people tell me, just let the ministry pay for it. I am the ministry. <laughs> you know, if the ministry goes and buys everything, then when it comes to me receiving something, there's nothing there. So I learned to protect that. And so uh, we got in that meeting and God said, now here's how it works. You've got to be able to give from the heart. So we had little hand, handwritten checks. I asked Angel, I said, uh, let me have the checkbook. That wasn't a whole lot in it. And uh, she said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to write a check for $300. No problem. I don't have to call anybody and say, hey, I'm going to give it $300. And so I wrote it. Now there's three services. There's morning, afternoon, and evening services. So we came to the next offering. I said, let me have that checkbook. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to write a check. She said, how much? I said, $300. She said, you just wrote one for $300. I said, you know, the policy is I can't write one over $300. No one said how many I can write at $300. <laughs> See, I'm, well, people say, well, you know, I wouldn't have done that. You know, my flesh didn't want to do it either because that's, that's it. I'm giving it away. Next offering. What are you doing? Writing another check. How much? $300. You know that third one? That pen was sweating in my hand a little bit. Yeah. Because we were staying at the hotel, at the convention center. That's, uh, they didn't let us stay there for free. It was a Marriott. Uh, they wanted paid. Uh, I wasn't planning on fasting all week, so we wanted to eat, and we just keep giving it. You know, and I did it again, and I get there early. I was, I'm in line, 6 o'clock in the morning. Why would you do that? Hungry. Hungry to hear what? The Word. Why? Because faith comes by hearing it. I'm hungry. I want the word of God. I'm tired of the enemy stealing, killing, destroying. I'm tired of looking at things I want to do, and I can't do it because I have nothing to do it with. How do you help people? You've got to have more than desire to help them. You have to have resources. I like what Brother Hagin would say. People say to him, you know, well, the God, why are you receiving so much offerings? The gospel is free as water. He said it is free. It just costs millions to pump it into you. To pipe it in. You know, the gospel's free, but getting it there. Delta wants us to pay them to fly to South Africa, to Zambia. Can you imagine that? They don't say, man of God, we know you're helping people. Bring your staff. We'll let you go. Huh. Have you seen the price of tickets lately? Yeah, domestically is even discouragingly. Domestically, is no different than international. It's bad. And so, so I, I was there in line because I wanted to hear the word of God. I'd go get seats. I'd put our Bibles down, closer we could to the front. And literally, when I'd get there at 6 o'clock in the morning, people would be undoing their air mattresses. Slept out there all night. To get to, house, to, get to the preaching. Whew. And I'd go get seats. I'd go back over to the hotel. I'd wait for Angel. We'd come over to service together all morning, all afternoon and evening. And uh, I, I got there, the same people be in line. I got talking to them. What do you do? Well, what do you do? This is what we're doing. This is what I'm trying to do. And uh, I was talking about Africa. And, and this was 99. I started in Kenya in 94. So just talking about what's going on. And, um, and that's what's happening. But uh, one of the afternoons, Angel and I were going out the side door to the convention center, as I've told you before. And uh, I just give him, just give him more money. And this guy, is a black guy, come running and yelling, hey, hey. Well, I don't know anybody in Anaheim. So I just, it was a sidewalk. I just moved to the side, let them go on by. But he stopped. And he said, when you walk by me in the convention center, God told me to do this for you. And handed me a fistful of money. I went 
God knew I was in Anaheim? <laughs> no. I put it in my pocket. You know, I don't know what to say. Speech had never happened before like that. We're walking, we walk to the hotel, and I'm trying to move it around. <laughs> <laughs> See, see if you can count. <laughs> Come on. See if you can count how much is in there, you know. And you're just, uh, you're just waiting. You don't want to get it out and walk and doing this stuff, you know. And, um, and so we get over there. I said, praise God. And so we went that way. And, and so that last night before we drove up to Vice Head to meet David and Tammy for the first time. And how much was it? I don't remember. It's like $500. And uh, I'm thinking, well, I've given one, two, three. And, uh, and so uh, that evening, I told Angel, let's go down to the bookstore, you know, where they have all their tables and everybody has their CDs and cassettes, more cassettes back then, just getting in CDs. And I said, let's just go look at them because I didn't have money to buy. And uh, that's why I give away so much. If somebody, I made something, somebody wants it. I get it because I know what it is standing at the table wanting to want and I couldn't get it. And uh, and so I'm standing there and I said, uh, Angel, look, there's that lady that I've been talking to every morning. Her name was Marty. She lived in California. And I went over and I said, Marty, this is my wife, Angel. And as soon as I said that, she she went, it's God, it's God. And jokingly, I said, no, it's Ken. <laughs> and... Uh, she said, this morning, the Lord spoke to me to give you some money. And I'm thinking, there's 10, 000, I said, there's 10,000 people here. How am I going to find him and 10,000 people? You'll have to bring him to me. So she wrote me a check for $500 and handed it to me. And I'm telling you what, by the time we got home, after leaving that, that, and Pastor David's, I got back everything that I did, $300 at a time. There was plus and the enemy tried to steal it when I got pulled over from crossing an invisible wall. <laughs> but even God had mercy on me. <laughs> even God had mercy and the devil didn't steal that money. So I'm telling you. So to give, I, I learned something. If you let this get in revelation in your heart, you, you, you won't fight it. it it's, it'd be tough, but you, you'll quit fighting it. Because you'll quit thinking about, if I do this, I won't have that. You keep thinking about it. I'll never get this if I don't do this. And that's where, you're, that's where, you, that's where you come from. You don't look at, I, 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 how, how am I going to buy that? I really want this, but if I give it all away. No, you got to think about it. I'm not giving it away. I'm sowing this. I'm investing this because there's something greater that God wants to put in my hand. God wants to put in my hand. It's not about giving to man. This is not man thing. This is about kingdom revelation. And what begins to happen in our life. This is where we're at. So, so, we, so we begin to see this. And we see, begin to see what's going on. But it all happens by revelation. Now I'm going to skip some things here. I'm going to turn a page. And I want to skip some stuff. And uh, I want to talk about. We talked about in Matthew chapter 16. When, when, he, when Peter said uh, upon this rock. Jesus said upon this rock I build my church. And we talked that being revelation. But I want to look at some steps here because it's not just enough to know that we need revelation. How, how, how do we get it? How do we get it? How do we get revelation knowledge? Now, revelation knowledge is when God breathes on something or you take knowledge revealed by God or God reveals something to you and it becomes revelation to you. Re revelation, illumination, something that you've never had before. And all of a sudden it becomes a life to you. Revelation is when people say the light came on. You're no longer in darkness. You're no longer in the fear part. Because once you get to revelation, it removes the fear. It, it removes the fear from it. Because you trust God that he's going to work it out for you. And that's what's going to happen. So there's a couple of things. I went back and looked at it. I've shared these before on a Wednesday night, some of these points. But some of the things I want to talk about real quick. I want to at least get to this first one. About steps on how to get re revelation. Number one is expect the Holy Spirit to flood your spirit with light. Expect the Holy Spirit to flood your spirit with light. See, the Holy Spirit's inside of you. Uh, the Bible talks about him being the spirit of truth. The, the Bible says that he is also the teacher. He teaches and reveals inside of us. I would take the Bible 
back in the day when we didn't have office t- uh, to go to and uh, didn't have an office that we rented. We did before we came here to pastor. And I, I would walk in hotel rooms when I'm doing meetings. I would prepare as I'm studying to preach. And I would take the Bible and I'd begin to read scriptures. And I'd hold the Bible on one hand and I'd hold my hand right here. There's nothing spiritual about putting your hand here. It's just I do this because the Bible says that the, that the uh, spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So I say this is the inward man, the, the hidden man of the heart where the spirit of God dwells. And I'd walk and say, Father, I thank you that I have revelation. I'm anointed for revelation. You don't want me just continue to operate out of my brain and out of my head. You want more for me. I'm anointed for revelation. I'm anointed for revelation. I'm anointed for revelation. You know, one day, uh, dad, pastor Rothwell, uh, to you guys, he, uh, he said to me, he said, son, you, you see things in the Bible, uh, that, 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 that I, I don't even see, you know, you, you bring points out. Well, he brought points out that I never saw when I did it. And uh, it doesn't just happen because you use your Bible for a pillow and, uh, and you just start, you know, uh, going to draw it that way. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to use my Bible for a pillow. I'm going to get smart in the word of God. No, it's not osmosis. It's, it's, it's the word of God. And I would walk and say, I'm anointed to understand this. I'm anointed to get this. I'm anointed to get this. And when I see it, I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to walk in it. I'm not just going to say I know it. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to start applying this. And when I start walking in it, hearing plus doing is what continues to bring revelation. I can't just hear it. I've got to do it. I can't just hear it. I've got to do it. If I'm going to get manifestation, I can't just hear it. I must do it. Amen. See, hearing it takes no effort. Doing it takes something now outside of your own little emotion and say, I'm actually going to walk this out. So hearing plus doing is what brings this. And I said, Lord, I hear this. I'm going to do this. And when I stumble at it, I don't get down and allow shame get all over me. I'm just going to go back and regroup and keep listening to it and keep saying, I'm anointed for revelation. I'm anointed for revelation. I'm anointed for revelation. The word of God is life to me. God wants me to understand this. He doesn't want me to stay in the dark. Everything is hidden. He wants to bring the light. But you can't sit in church and be thinking about, you know, this or that or, or wanting to check your phone and, and wanting to see who liked your last post and who didn't and see how many things going on. You have to decide in your heart, this is revelation knowledge. I've got to have this to live by. My kids need it. My grandkids needs it. I can't just live by just knowledge. Oh, I can quote the Bible. You know, years ago when I was just a young man here, uh, I went with some uh, deacons and we went down to the grocery down here where the La Fiesta is now and all of that. Uh, Fiesta uh, Fiesta Charles, sorry, wrong county. Uh, <laughs> Fiesta Charles. It was Miller's grocery store. And I'd stand there and we'd hand out tracks. And uh, I remember this one guy, I was just young, you know, uh, just still in high school. And uh, you want a track? No, don't want a track. This guy was so grumpy. No, I don't want to track. I'm thinking, it may, it may help you. <laughs> Are you a Christian? Yes, I'm a Christian. I know the Bible from front and back. No, you don't. <laughs> I've read it from cover to cover. I know that Bible. No, if you did, you wouldn't act like this. Brother stupid, you would have. <laughs> I wasn't sanctified then. No. And I'm thinking, just because you read it don't mean you know it. Come on. Just because you read it doesn't mean you know it. Just because you've heard it preach doesn't mean it got inside of you. Because little things keep trying to steal that out of your heart. You know, if you'd understand when the Bible says when you're going through fiery trials and temptation, all that stuff, count it all joy. When you want to stay in the spirit till you get home. And you got fuss in the back seat and you want to turn around. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) You know, if you would just say, "Uh uh-uh, devil, you're not stealing from me. You lock your shed so they don't, people don't steal your tools. You lock your car so people don't get in it. How about locking your heart? away when you leave here today 
and say, no one's going to steal this because without revelation, I'm just going to be a mere human. But with it, I'm going to go from glory to glory. I'm going to step out of my human side and step into a supernatural. Even though I'm human, I'm going to get the supernatural parts of God on me so I can operate in it. That's what it's all about. It doesn't just happen because, well, I've been saved now 30 years. No, there's some people have been saved 30 years still, still acts like a spiritual baby because they keep listening to their emotions. So it's not how many years you've been saved. It's how you develop your spirit on the inside. You know, the thing that steals it quicker than anything, I know I say it a lot, is offense. Is offense. As soon as you get, you realize that I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue to take offense to this. Then you're going to start growing quicker spiritually. Because offense and pride is what comes to steal, kill, and destroy this thing. You just got to stay out of it. So when you go home today and this thing tries to steal the word out of your heart, or tomorrow when you show up to work and uh, somebody lied about you, trying to get you fired or whatever it is, so no, I'm not going to get into that natural carnal fight. My God is going to preserve me. God's going to protect me. I'm not going to allow the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy what I received this weekend. And I'm going to live in victory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. (laughs) See, you you have to, I remember being in the construction, being in construction. Now, those porta johns aren't the best place to be in. You get in and get out. (laughs) Even though they say they clean them once a week. (laughs) And there was times when I was working in Columbus that you get under so much pressure and you get under things like that, that uh, there was no place to go. I remember going into a port john and standing there and saying, I'm going, I refuse to allow myself to get into the flesh and get offended. I'm going to make a decision right now that this is how I'm going to live. You just got to, you got to decide. You got to decide on what's going on. I did it in there because I don't want anybody to see me talking to myself. But in, you got to decide on what you do. Right. Don't allow him to steal the life and truth out of you. So allow God to flood your spirit with light. The entrance of God's word gives light. Amen. Now the light is in you. The Bible says in Jesus was life. And his life became the light of man. So soon as something in you that's life, life always produces light inside of you. So in him was life, and his life became the light of men. So that's why you're light to the world, because in him is life. And life will give that light. Amen? And uh, so you, he, you have the life of God in you, and the life of God in you is going to continue to flood you and uh, bring life to you. And so in in me is life, in me is light, in me is him. And so as long as I understand that Christ in me is what brings me to this point, then I'm not going to just feel like I'm just treading water in life. Nobody wants to just go through life treading water. But you got the ability to live free all the days of your life. Amen. So don't just... Think about discipleship classes in in church just as preaching time. You look at it as a time that I'm going to absorb the word of God and it's going to produce revelation in my life. And once it gets in there, the enemy can't take it. Amen. The enemy can't take it. Hallelujah. All right, let's stand together. Come on.